How do you make a 3D model of a boat using only a camera and free software? The reason we're doing this is that our little boat Oslo is a bit of a mystery. We're restoring a 70 year old wooden gaff cutter here in New Zealand and we don't have the lines, we don't have any plans, we don't know the design. I wanted to try a method called photogrammetry where you take a series of photos around an object and then you can use software to reconstruct that into a 3D model of which we could then extract the line information. If you want to skip ahead to the part that actually shows you how to do it, then go to this timestamp. Hi. Hi. Okay, so when we first got Oslo, there was quite a bit of oral history that came with her. The story was that she was built by a company called Jorgensons and Sons in Picton in 1960, and that she is either a William Aitken or Colin Archer design. However, when we followed up on some of these claims, um, we found that they didn't quite stand up to scrutiny. As for being built in Picton, Charlotte managed to get a message to one of Jorgensen's sons, correct? Yes. And he said that they'd never built such a boat. I got a fun fact. Go on. The closest boat they did build at the time was called Saga. Right. As for the designers, we got in touch with this bloke in the UK who knows a bit about Colin Archer's and he said that it wasn't a Colin Archer, but that he liked it anyway, which was nice. Yeah. Um, as for William Aitken designs, um, previous owners have suggested that it could be a thistle. One of our subscribers, uh, Scott, pointed us towards the Alden 21 and that seems to be pretty close. So we've had a good look and we've not found anything that matches exactly. So once we have the lines, hopefully we'll be able to compare those to published designs and see where the similarities are, where the differences are, and maybe get a better idea of what the designs we use to build her. Making a 3D scan like this is surprisingly easy. Here's the way I did it. We moved the boat into a more open area in the boatyard. This is so that a series of photos could be taken around the boat at different heights. You could still do this with less space and a phone camera. I also wanted to try 3D scan the interior, but this was a lot harder. Now, with the photos on the computer, I opened up Reality Scan, which is a free photogrammetry software. I put the photos in and it worked first try. It works by triangulating thousands of points in 3D space based on overlapping photos taken from different angles. It can then connect these points to create a 3D mesh model. That's what you see here. This is the result from around 100 photos, mostly focusing on the hull. Color me impressed. Or, with the click of one button, color the scan with the photos. <laughs> The interior scan didn't come out quite as good, it was really hard to get the right camera angles in there, however it could still be useful as a reference. To set the scale, you take a measurement in real life and then define that same measurement in the software. I'm really happy with the result. The next stage in the process was to use some computer aided design software to take the lines. Oh, so um... I decided to use Fusion 360 for the 3D modeling software just because that's what I'm familiar with. The idea was to set up a series of stations and water lines and then trace around the model, make cleaner lines and then use that to export 2D projections of the boat's lines. This was a lot harder than I thought it would be. <laughs> I'm going to run through this part a bit quicker so make sure you keep up. I imported the model into Fusion Simplified the and positioned Next, the model I created in the a scene sketch on to the tidy the map I used to fit curve stations and water lines are going to go. Why is that playing on a weird angle? So it's a problem, but there's just like no settings and I'm so frustrated. You sound frustrated. That's because I am frustrated. With the model finished, the last step was to create a new drawing and add 2D projections. What do you mean fusion doesn't work that way? 
I've spent hours doing this. I went to bed and resumed the next day. It turns out fusion doesn't work in a lot of ways that I expected. Anyway, I took this chance to add a few more details and now we can try it again. So essentially what using Fusion has allowed me to do is trace around the 3D model in a really precise controlled way. This means at any point later I could go back, adjust where the lines actually are drawn and take precise measurements. But for now we've got this casual version of our boat's lines and we can use that to compare to other boat models. Hi. So we have compared these lines to designs that we found that look similar to Oslo and still still nothing seems to match. It Oslo seems to be a bit of a a bit of a mutt. Why are you behind me? Okay. Um oh so taking the two closest known designs, the Alden 21 and the William Aiken Ingrid, if we compare those lines to Oslo's lines we get something looking pretty similar. Compared to the Elden 21, the stern's quite different, but the bow has a similar shape. Next, we have the Aiken Ingrid. Very similar in shape, but proportionally longer. Here is the Aiken Fissile, which is a scaled down version of the Ingrid. This is a pretty close match, but still not exactly the same. The idea is that Oslo is perhaps scaled down another third from the Fissil. What's that mean? That it looks pretty similar. <laughs> so, you might think that because Oslo isn't of an official design that that makes her a bit sketchy, but one of the previous owners was Jack Crooks, who was a bit of a celebrated boat builder in New Zealand. Um, he built a boat called the Turangi, which was the first South Island built boat to circumnavigate the world. And that boat was also an Ingrid. Yes, correct. So um, him and his partner at the time bought Oslo because it would look like a scaled down Ingrid. And Jack Crooks was the one who converted Oslo from a Bermuda rig to a gaff rig. So our thinking is that if Jack Crooks thought that it was worth the effort to do the conversion on Oslo, um, that he must have thought that she was of a pretty good design. If she's good enough for Jack Crooks, she's good enough for us. Yeah. Oh, that's a nice way to put it. We need to get from here to over there. Next episode, we are officially starting work on Oslo in the workshop. We've spent so many months just setting up the place, dealing with floods, rats, concrete dust, sealing the floors, glazing the windows, just trying to set it up with whatever scrappy bits we have. But next week, boat work. Finally. Would you like to say something to the nice people? Thanks. <laughs> um, no, seriously, everyone's comments, it really keeps us going. Thank you so much. This is really hard and it's really hard to keep up motivation, but having people comment and knowing that people are following along with the story is, is so lovely. So thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Goodbye. Bye.